Hey guys, this is my Sterling Cycle Cryo Cooler Air Liquifier. Um, but inside the black box is the cryo cooler, and in the thermos is liquefied air. You can see it's running up top because little resonators shaking around. Um, and this fan is circulating cold air, pulling it through that little copper heat sink at the bottom. Um, it's been running about two hours now, and I'm going to shut it off and We'll see what it's made. This aluminum box right here is a variable auto transformer. So I'm going to turn that off because it's been powering the cryo cooler. And I'm going to shut off the black fan that's on the cryo cooler. And I'm out of the frame, I'm shutting off a um, fan that's circulating over the power supply. This thermos down here is like a standard camping thermos. It's not as well insulated as a professional lab grade doer, but it works for my purposes. And I just use some springs and a piece of tubing to hold it on. There's ice at the top because it's not insulated very well. Um, but you can see that it's really, really cold inside. I just had some copper tubes zip tied to the, the cold finger, which is the, the coldest part of the cryo cooler. Um, you can see some ice build up there and just cold air streaming down. Can't really see if anything's in there yet. Um, I'll have to dump it out and see what's in there. Since I've just rigged this up to test the cryo cooler's functionality, I haven't filtered or done anything special to the incoming air. So there's a lot of water vapor that's condensed, probably some carbon dioxide chunks. It's oxygen, argon, and nitrogen. It's not nothing of any purity. So I'm just testing to see if it'll get really cold and liquefy air in general. Sounds like some stuff is sloshing around in there, so I think we have liquefied something. Maybe. Oh, here we go. That is liquefied air. It's condensed mostly nitrogen out of the atmosphere of my room and it's now in liquid form ultra ultra cold cryogenic temperatures this is exciting and it looks like there's probably a good few ounces in there that's more than I was expecting which is excellent got all of it wonderful Okay, I'm gonna pull this out and see how it how it looks. Um, I know I'm not wearing gloves. I'm being ultra, ultra, ultra careful. If you do anything like this, please wear gloves, eye protection, the full everything. I'm dumb, just don't follow my example. It's a pretty good amount of stuff. Uh, I'm pleased. Here's the cold finger and the copper heat sink thing that I used. You can see it's still really, really cold and icy. Um, whole apparatus is still just hanging out there. I should have thought of something to do with the liquid air that I made. Um, I couldn't think of any projects offhand, so I just poured it on the desk and watched little balls fizzle away, have little Linden Frosties, Linden Frosties, something like that. So this has been sitting out for a few minutes and the nitrogen has a lower boiling point than oxygen. So the nitrogen is starting to boil off and you can see it's kind of a pale blue because liquid oxygen is blue. Um, little smoke trails look really cool and I was blowing on it just to make smoke. Small amusement. Let's peek back in here and see if we can see some more blue. The nitrogen is boiling off, which is making a higher concentration of oxygen. That's the very faint blue. you got to be really careful because oxygen is a very powerful oxidizer. That's kind of dangerous. Now I'm going to remove everything that I put around the cryo cooler to make it an air liquefier. So I'll just have the the bare cooling assembly um, and let you see how that looks. Um, the gray cord you see is the power 
that goes to the fan, the circulation fan. We cut those wire ties off um, so we can get out the, the cryo cooler assembly inside. I just zip tie this case together. It's really just cobbled together to get it to work. Um, the cryo cooler needs air to circulate around it when it operates so it doesn't overheat and melt itself. So I just built this little box to have the airflow. There are lots of gaps and stuff. So there's foam stuff in the cracks that's flopping around everywhere. The cryo cooler is this big silver thing and there's pressurized helium inside that gets compressed and expanded and makes the little place where the blue band is super super cold but everything else gets pretty warm so I have to keep that cool keep the warm parts cool to get the cool parts really really cold um, yeah the cryo cooler just sits in this black little cradle so I can have airflow around it and keep it from rolling around um, I'll try to show you the label but I think the lights kind of messing it up just patents and stuff but it's made by superconductor technologies Next I'm going to remove the copper tubes that I use to conduct the heat removal out of the thermos. It's just standard copper tubing that I've bent, crushed and bent to fit. Um, this next part I'm removing is a V-band clamp. And I have a 3D printer, so I printed a V-band clamp adapter to fit in the thermos. Well, so it'll keep it pretty snug and sturdy, but still allow a little bit of the air to pass through to be liquefied. Um, so I'm going to pop that off, and you can see this purple, purplish clear plastic thing is the adapter that I've printed. You can, the cable that's hanging over the edge is the power cord for the cryo cooler. And the cryo cooler runs on, I think, 16 to 20 volts AC. So it has a normal plug on it, but I have to run it through the variable auto transformer to keep the current and voltage just right. 